Well, another, another beautiful afternoon in Minnesota. Beautiful fall day. And uh, last time, I cut our study short by a bit because uh, it was pretty close to supper. And I realized I had forgotten to, to, to uh, videotape my Bible study. So I hustled to do that, but it was a short one. And so, you know, uh, please bear with me. I have plenty of uh, faults and frailties. And, uh, and I think you probably do as well. Uh, let's spot, well, let me share a couple of things. Because we've had COVID in our family, Keith and Michelle had COVID. Mary for a while thought she probably did. I don't think so. And so as a precaution, the council has been very strict. Two Sundays ago, I couldn't preach. Last Sunday, I had to preach behind a plexiglass um, piece uh, in front of the lectern. And I was not allowed to interact with anybody. I came in the side door, left by the side door, the downstairs bathroom I could use, but that was marked as out of order so that I could use it. And I just had to get in my car and I greeted a few people from the inside of my car as they left church. But uh, I think uh, we should be okay. And I don't think there'll be many restrictions going forward after this coming Sunday. And by the way, this is VBS Sunday. They're gonna play the, the video from the VBS and the kids are gonna sing and it should be a fun time. But let's sub off for prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege of opening your word and gleaning the wisdom and knowledge that is contained there for even a simple-minded child. Give us that kind of simplicity that we might glean nuggets of truth and wisdom to be applied to our lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. On verse 13. I tend to think we went over this one last week, but we'll do it again. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens the heart falls into trouble. Several times in the book of Proverbs, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. May our daily prayer be, Lord, give me a spirit of humility before you. That I may gain a heart of wisdom. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God. But whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. And how do we harden our heart? Well, when we're full of pride, when we're full of arrogance, when we feel we're the ones who know it all, not God. I don't have any reason to listen to him. I'm going to do it my own way. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. Verse 15. A roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a helpless people. This world has had more than its share of wicked rulers, and we have plenty of them, even in our own country, who care very little about ordinary people. They have their agenda, they have their ideas, And I think the philosophy is to hell with anybody who would oppose me. It's a sad, sad thing, but true. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a helpless people. But the great thing is, you know what? You're trusting in the Savior, you're not helpless. You have won already the overwhelming victory through Christ Jesus who loved us 
and gave himself for us. Be encouraged. Verse 16, the tyrannical ruler practices extortion, but one who hates ill-gotten gain will enjoy a long reign. Extortion is pretty common among leaders, among politicians, on the part of unscrupulous business people. And part of it is extortion. Okay. I'll expose you if you don't do this for me. But the reality is God knows everything anyway. So we don't have to any worry about some human being exposing th something that we have done because God already knows it. And if it is something that's displeasing to him, it is marked for judgment. A tyrannical ruler practices extortion. But one who hates ill-gotten gain will enjoy a long reign. Why is that? Because that person probably understands that all authority is from God. And he holds those accountable who have been given that authority and how they exercise it and practice it. And so, in many ways, this verse is referring to someone who lives in the fear and the knowledge of God. And basically, that person will live a long, blessed life in this world, but in the world to come, especially. Verse 17, anyone tormented by the guilt of murder will seek refuge in the grave. Let no one hold them back. Some people think the grave is a way of escape. It's a way out of being held accountable. But that is certainly not the case. As we're told in the scriptures, it is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. Judgment is coming beyond the grave. And we will have to give an account of every word and every deed that was part of our existence as a human being. And yet by the grace of God, all of those deeds that we might be ashamed of are covered by the blood of Christ if we are trusting in him and seeing, seeking to live a life that, are, that is pleasing to him. So don't worry about those who want to escape. Accountability. By embracing death. It only reveals how foolish they truly are. Anyone tormented by guilt, the guilt of murder, will seek refuge in the grave. Let no one hold them back. Verse 18. The one whose walk is blameless is kept safe. But the one whose ways are perverse will fall into the pit. Now, it doesn't mean that those who believe will escape harm or violence against them. But as a general principle, those who are seeking to walk according to God's standards and God's principles are kept safe from many things in this life. I can look back on my life and even before I was a believer, I see how God's gracious hand was protecting me from a lot of things that were the downfall of people that I know, and I'm grateful. But the one whose ways are perverse will fall into the pit, either in this life or in the life to come. Because whatsoever a man sows or a woman sows, that will they also reap. Because we are all accountable 
to the God of heaven who created us. Verse 20. That's where I should have started this afternoon. So I apologize. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. If you're faithful, if you're living a life of trust and obedience and faithfulness to God, you are rich in the most important way ever. You are rich in the things of God, and there is no greater wealth because anything else that we might gain in terms of wealth or inheritance in this life will perish. The only things that will last for all eternity is our love and our obedience and our desire to please the Savior. That will be acknowledged and that will be honored and that will be recognized in heaven. It's a good thing. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. It doesn't matter how much you have in this world. In terms of possessions, in terms of recognition by others. The only thing that counts is being rich toward God. Loving Him, obeying Him, serving Him, acknowledging Him before others. Those are the things that count for all eternity. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Verse 21, to show partiality is not good. Yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread. So, very often, people do show preference for other people. And a lot of it has to do with, well, how how much deference do they show to us? How much do they exhibit a desire to please us? And those people will show deference to. Well, those will be our, our favored relationships in this life. To show partiality is not good. It's not a good thing. Yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread. People are eager to please. And if they can get something, even a piece of bread, they will be willing to do something wrong, something that will please someone else who has something to give to them. When in reality, the only one we really have to please in this life is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only one. Whatever we do, we work at it with all our heart. Not as serving men, but as serving God. That's the secret to a fulfilled life, a happy life, a rich life. Verse 22, the stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them. Why is that? Because the philosophy of the world says, get all you can for yourself. Don't worry about the other guy. Don't worry about pleasing God. Get what you can for yourself. That's the path of blessing in this life. But that certainly is not the case. Poverty awaits them. I think last Sunday I used the illustration of that parable that Jesus gave him of the, the wealthy farmer who all his buildings were full of grain. He said, oh, what am I going to do about this? Well, what I'll do is I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can eat, drink, and be merry and happy all the days of my life. And the Lord said, wait a minute. This very day, your soul will be demanded of you because you are not rich in things of God. stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them. 
Verse 23. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than one who has a flattering tongue. I'm not sure I understand that proverb. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor. Unless it's talking about, you know, very often we see something that shouldn't be going on and we turn our heads and walk away. When there's sometimes when God wants us to take a stand. I say to someone who is committing that evil or wrong or wicked act, stop. Stop it. In that sense, that person will gain favor from God, who is always with the lowly, who is always on the side of those who are suffering injustice. So he will be pleased if we stand up and say, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Rather than one who has a flattering tongue. Well, in our day, a lot of people are doing all kinds of terrible things. And very often, they're the ones who are praised. Those are the ones who are lauded and applauded and followed on social media. But God's standards are different, right? And we want to live by them, not the standards of this world. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than one who has a flattering tongue. Verse 24, whoever robs their father or mother and says, it's not wrong, is a partner to the one who destroys. The Bible is very clear. Honor your father and mother, friends, that your days may be long upon the earth. How could it ever be that robbing from your father or mother could be something that is pleasing in the sight of God? It is not. And don't fall into that trap because that is a lie from the pit of hell. Whoever robs their father or mother and says it, it's not wrong is a partner to the one who destroys. And who's that partner? The devil the liar, the deceiver, the destroyer. Verse 25, the greedy stir up conflict. But those who trust in the Lord will prosper. I think the greedy often stir up conflict because they feel it's a way for them to get an advantage. Maybe as a way of taking the focus off them and getting others thinking about some other kind of personal conflict that is waging be, raging between them. The greedy love to stir that up, and then they'll step in and they'll take something for themselves. The greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Do you love the Lord? Do you seek to obey Him? You are prosperous, my friend. You are blessed beyond measure. Verse 26. Those who trust in themselves are fools. Those who walk in the wisdom, those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. And the wisdom it's referring to is the wisdom of God imparted to us through the Holy Scriptures as the Holy Spirit ministers the truth of God's Word to our heart and our lives and our actions and our attitudes. Those who trust in themselves are fools. Well, isn't that what... Uh, Adam and Eve did in the garden of Eden. They were trusting in themselves. The devil said, oh, don't listen to God. He's trying to put you down. If you really want to be blessed, do whatever you want. If you want to go eat that fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, go ahead and do it. Who's going to stop you? Well, the whole human race found what the consequences were for their act of disobedience. 
Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. And if you're walking in the wisdom of God, found in this word, you're safe for all eternity because of what Jesus has done for you. Verse 27, those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. God is on the side of the weak, of the poor, of the disadvantaged. And at some point in time, he will take what the rich have and he will give it to those who have, no have nothing. You know that uh, illustration, that story, I think it's in Luke 11, of the rich man and Lazarus. In this life, the rich man had everything. And the beggar would daily sit at the rich man's door, longing even for the scraps of food that were supposed to go to the dog. They longed for those scraps of food. But Lazarus, but the rich man gave them, gave Lazarus nothing. But in eternity, their roles were Those who give to the poor will lack nothing but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. And the last verse of Proverbs 28 is verse 28. When the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. But when the wicked perish, the righteous thrive. Let me ask you, What kind of people are going to be walking around the streets of heaven? The wicked won't be there. The greedy of this world won't be there. The ambitious people from the things of this world won't be there. Those who will long to spend their days loving and serving and praising him, those will be the ones walking the streets of heaven. And I trust you will be among those who will know those glorious days with the Savior forever. Thanks for tuning in today. Look forward to visiting with you next week. Thanks.